How you doing, guys? Hope everybody's having a great week so far. What I wanted to talk about very briefly today, um, and I'm going to try to make this a two-part video, is people's confusion on forgiveness of sins and what else? Um, their understanding of dispensations. So what I want to talk about is there are people that they understand Paul's epistles somewhat. And they believe their sins were forgiven after the cross through Christ's shed blood, same as I do. But they have a misunderstanding when it comes to the world being forgiven of sins. For example, as I just said, they believe their sins and the world's sins were forgiven at the cross through Christ shed blood. But they have this, this mindset that they think, when they hear world, they're, they're thinking this. They think the world for all time. They think across all dispensations that's what that's what these people think they think the world for all time and across all dispensations has been forgiven of sins now you have to think you have to use some critical thinking about this and this doesn't make any sense has have those in the tribulation that don't exist we're, we're talking about a future time period that's what i'm talking about today i'm not talking about just now so i'm going to be talking about this next dispensation time the people here in that next dispensation the ones that are going to go through the tribulation which is talked about in revelation are they have they already had their sins forgiven the answer is no but there are people that think these people we're given forgiveness of sins the same way we are in the dispensational grace today. No, and let, let me say like, no one, no one else is getting forgiveness of sins today. Let me, let me make that clear. I'm saying we in the dispensational grace have all been forgiven at the cross through Christ's shed blood. But there are people that think they, those in the next dispensation at the cross, Christ just forgave them of all their sins. That doesn't make any sense. For example, in the next dispensation, if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. Taking the mark of the beast in the next dispensation is a sin. Did Christ forgive the mark of the beast's sin? No. But that's what you're going to end up doing if you say Christ has forgiven all their sins already. He has not forgiven all their sins. Now, people are going to argue with me. I know there's people that watch this channel and... You, you're on some different stuff, and you might be watching somebody else that says, no, Brandon, all their sins have been forgiven. No, there's no verse within Paul's epistles that is telling you that. Paul's not saying those in the next dispensation have been forgiven of, forgiven of all sins. He's not telling you that. So in the next dispensation, some people ask questions such as, okay, Brandon, well, how, how are they going to get their sins forgiven? They will have to, we'll go to Acts 3, verse 19. And the answer is there, if I have the right chapter and verse. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, what does this mean? Acts, we know in Acts, this is Peter talking, and he's speaking to the nation of Israel. But let me ask you first, was the nation of Israel given complete forgiveness of sins? The answer is no. The nation of Israel was given remissions of sins. We can go and find that in Acts 2.38. If you just flip back, let's go to Acts 2.38. In Acts 2.38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. See, remission of sins means they were given, the nation of Israel, in the past back here, this past dispensation, 
the nation of Israel was given remissions of sins. They were not given complete forgiveness of sins as you and I are. You, you and I were given at the cross. They, those who were part of the nation of Israel, the real nation of Israel, they were only given remissions of their sins, forgiveness of their past sins. The nation of Israel would get the rest of their sins forgiven in the times of refreshing in the next dispensation. I know this is confusing a little bit for some people. It was confusing for me as well. But you have to understand that saying the world for all time across all dispensations has been forgiven of sins is completely wrong. That would become a form of universalism. No, it's, that's not the case. They were not, those in the tribulation revelation, that they don't even exist yet, so I'm talking about future time period. Their forgiveness of sins, they will get their sins blotted out, forgiveness of, sin, forgiveness of sins, at the times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. What will they do following to get this forgiveness of sins? I mean, is God just going to come down and just, bam, for, they're just forgiven of sins? No, they're going to have to confess their sins to God as a nation. See, people today think confessing your sin is an individual thing. No, they, and they take that, that verse out of context. Um, I don't have it right here on the board with me right now, I don't believe. Let me see. No, I don't. I'm going to have to put it in the comments section. But there's a verse in John. If someone finds it, I mean, you can put it in the comments section as well. Well, what he's talking about, they confess their sins to God. He's faithful to forgive them of their sins. That's not an individual thing. That is something that they will do, the nation of Israel will do as a nation. They will confess their sins to God here. They'll confess their sins to God and he will forgive them of their sins. He will blot out their sins. So, but again, let me ask you this. If their sins have already been forgiven as some people incorrectly say, why would God need to come back and blot out their sins? Therefore, those in the tribulation, their sins have not been forgiven the way our sins have been in the dispensation of grace. You can't, they have to get their sins blotted out. The nation of Israel in the next dispensation will have to get their sins blotted out. And they will do that by confessing their sins to God. When God comes back to the earth, they confess their sins as a nation to God. God will blot out their sins. That's it. Now, I don't, some people, again, I don't know if there's a trust of the Bible issue going on with some people and they just don't want to trust what certain verses say because they still want to hold on to this belief system, this false belief system that the Bible does not say at all, where they're saying the entire world across all dispensations has been forgiven of sins. That is not true. Only right now, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19, only right now, this world, our world, during the dispensation of grace, we, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their, that's us, everyone alive on this world, not imputing their trespasses unto them. He's not imputing our trespasses. Will God impute their trespasses in this next dispensation? Yes. Now, some people don't like that, but hey, take it up with God. He will impute their trespasses, those in the next dispensation. Yes, he will. Now, what will they have to do to get those trespasses that have been counted against them because God is counting their trespasses? What are they going to have to do to get them forgiven? I just explained it already. They're going to have to, as a nation, confess their sins to God at the times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. He's going to be on the earth and God will blot out their sins. But yes, God will be counting sins that are committed here, not here. Our sins are not being charged. Their sins, those in this dispensation. So what if somebody's left behind and they cross over into this next dispensation? Well, yes, in this dispensation, the sins they commit, God will charge to them. And they will have to do what? They will have to convert, become a proselyte, convert over into the nation of Israel. Then with the nation of Israel, confess their sins. You, you understand this now. So I don't know why there are people saying the world across all dispensations has been forgiven of sins. No, only during the dispensation of grace, only right now. 
This is why it's so important you get saved right now. Your sins aren't being charged. All your sins, anyone that's alive is hearing me. Any, you know, anyone in the dispensation of grace. Since, since what, Paul was the first one to be put into the body of Christ. That's when the dispensation of grace started. Since then, dispensation of grace has been going strong, but it's coming to an end, and one day it's going to end. When it ends, the world will then transfer over to be under the next dispensation, which is revelation, tribulation, that um, completely different from us. It's going back to Jewish things. Okay, you're gonna have to. There's gonna be a different gospel here. We have the gospel. First Corinthians, we have Paul's gospel, right? First Corinthians 15 verses one through four. Here, it's not gonna be Paul's gospel. It's gonna be something known as the everlasting gospel. See how they're, they're different. That's why I want you to understand. Don't mix things. Don't take things from our dispensation and insert them into the next dispensation. That is what you're doing when you're taking 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 and you're attempting, you're attempting to put it in this next dispensation. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. God will be charging their sins here in this next dispensation. Yes. Um, so let's go back to, let, let's go to 2 Peter 1 verse 9. Okay, I'm good on time. 2 Peter 1 verse 9. But he that lacketh these, let, let's go back up to uh, <clears throat> five. So Second Peter, let me see. Yeah, Second Peter, chapter one, verse five. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that I'm reading is not for us. This is for the nation of Israel. This is to, this letter is to who? The Gentiles or the nation of Israel? To the nation of Israel. Here we go. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Did Peter say all sins or did he say old sins? Old sins. The nation of Israel was purged from their old sins but they have yet to be purged from all sins they have not been forgiven of all their sins so there are people today that are actually trying to they have video channel they have channels trying to say those in the next dispensation have been forgiven of all their sins no that's completely wrong the nation of israel has not been forgiven of all sins yet they will hear when god comes back to the earth in the times of refreshing, uh, times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord, when they, as a nation, confess their sins to God, God will then forgive, blot out their sins. That is the that is when all their sins will be forgiven. We have yet to, we're not there yet. We're still in the dispensation of grace. So the nation of Israel has not been forgiven of all their sins. Now, is there a nation of Israel today? No. There is no nation of Israel today. So let it go. Some people that are still trying to say, I mean, 
as I just said, trying to say they've been forgiven of sins. No, you, you're wrong. Let it go. You're not the nation of Israel anyway. Why are you concerned about that? I know you want to know the Bible. I'm not, but what I'm saying is, if someone has shown you verses that are clearly showing you that the nation of Israel has not been forgiven of sins yet, but you are still fighting you just, with this false doctrine of trying to say they have been. The nation of Israel has been forgiven of all sins and across all time. No, they haven't. They have not. We have been forgiven of our sins. Now, let me ask you this. Are Gentiles in the next dispensation, do, have they been forgiven of all sins? No. Only Gentiles in the dispensation of grace. Everyone today in the dispensation of grace has been forgiven of all sins. Ephesians 1, 7, you can go there. And whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's for everyone in the dispensation of grace. What about Gentiles in the next dispensation? No, they have not been forgiven of all sins. And I'm going to tell you this. If you're a Gentile in the next dispensation, you're not saved. Now, what does that mean? If you remain a Gentile in this next dispensation, meaning you never believe Jesus Christ is the Savior, you never, you never believe the, the everlasting gospel, you never do what God tells you to do, the instructions in this next dispensation. You remain a Gentile in this next dispensation. If that's what you do, you're lost in that next dispensation. You want to be saved in that next dispensation? You got to believe the everlasting gospel. Do what it tells you to do. Fear God and give him glory. Now, there's more. Don't take the mark of the beast, but that's on another video I can do in a future time. But if you take the mark of the beast here, you're lost. There will be Gentiles taking the mark of the beast here. All right? There's no way to remain a Gentile in this next dispensation, but not, all right, you're going to remain a Gentile, meaning you're not going to believe God, because, I mean, those who, the Gentiles in this dispensation, they will not, they will not believe God. They will not uh, do the everlasting gospel. But there's no situation, like some of these um, rapture movies. Uh, I saw one a long time ago where they had a movie, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't a rapture, it was a tribulation movie. And they had like a girl on the movie that was, she didn't believe, but she wouldn't take the mark. That's not going to exist. Every Gentile in this dispensation, those that hear God's word and refuse it, refuse to listen to him, they will be sent a strong delusion and they will take the mark of the beast. That's just the way it is. Now, what happens if you're a Gentile next dispensation and you believe God? Then you're no longer a Gentile. You're going to become part of the nation of Israel. Your identity, you're going to lose your identity and you're going to be converted over into the nation of Israel. You will be the nation of Israel is what I'm saying. Um, as long as you believe the everlasting gospel in this next dispensation. But I, I, I might go into more detail on that again in another video. This video was just talking about how this, this right here, this, this belief is completely false. The world for all time across all dispensations has been forgiven is, is wrong. It's wrong. And I was there when I first got started. When I In 2018, I had that same thought process. I thought the whole world, like, across all dispensations, it didn't matter what dispensation you were in, even in Revelation, I said, oh, well, those in Revelation have been forgiven of sins. But I wasn't thinking in my mind. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. If they've been forgiven of sins, then how can anybody during this dispensation take the mark of the beast and go to hell? Well, it's, it's, the answer is simple. They haven't. They have yet to be forgiven of their sins, those in this next dispensation. They don't exist to, right now, but they've yet to be forgiven of sins, uh, been forgiven of their sins. And if you take the mark of beast in this dispensation, that's a sin God is not going to forgive. Just so you know, those that are confessing their sins to God in this next dispensation as the nation of Israel, together as the nation of Israel, um, confessing their sins to God, none of them have taken the mark of the beast. There's no situation where, like, some guy took the mark of the beast, and I don't know, like Gene Kim said, because Gene Kim actually said this. Gene Kim said if a person's cut their hand off in the next dispensation, 
somehow uh, that doesn't count anymore and, and they can just believe the, the everlasting gospel and they'll be put into the nation of Israel. No. If you take the mark of the beast in this next dispensation, you're done. You're going straight to hell. It's over. You're done. Um, so, yeah, the, you can't remove that. Nothing. It's over. So everyone that's confessing their sins to God as a nation in this dispensation, these are people, they have not taken the mark of the beast. Obviously, they've sinned, but they have not taken the mark of the beast. I just want you to understand that. All right, though, guys, um, that's why during this time period, this next dispensation, Revelation, people will have to endure unto the end. That's literally to the end of their life, to the end of Jesus Christ when he comes back. They have to endure unto the end. Anyone that's watching this video right now, I don't want you to go through this. All you have to do to be saved right now is believe the gospel. Christ died for our sins, your sins and my sins, was buried and rose again the third day. It's over. Everything's finished. You're not waiting to get your sins forgiven. That's over. That's already been done. Your sins were already forgiven there at the cross through Christ's shed blood. Ephesians 1 verse 7. It's over. Nobody's going to die in their sins today. Christ died for our sins already. There's no dying in your sins today. That's a complete lie. So I just want you guys to understand. That's what I wanted to talk about today. But um, I'll definitely probably do a part two to this to go a little bit more in detail and go through a couple more verses. But um, yeah, so um, I hope I made that as clear as I could. All right, guys, have a great day.